Self-awareness is a superpower. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. So I've already went ahead and pre-shuffled the cards for you guys. So go ahead and choose from the three different piles. There's pile number one, the crocodile. Then there's the hawk. And then there's the panther. This message is about what you need to know right now. This is a message from the universe. So I'm going to get straight into your reading and pull these two cards to the side and start off with the crocodile. So because you picked the crocodile pile, automatically what comes to mind when I'm looking at the crocodile and thinking about the crocodile energy is the crocodile's digestion. I feel like crocodiles have a very strong digestion. They're meat eaters and they are able to survive anywhere because of this strong digestion. So I feel like that message goes to you. Like if in your current situation right now, you're questioning whether you're able to stomach what's going on, whether you'll be able to survive what's going on, the message to you is that the crocodile spirit is within you and because of that, you can survive anything. I want to go ahead and pick a message for you guys to go along with this pile. So I'm moving these pieces of paper around and I'm just going to pick one. And this says, being vulnerable is scary. Being vulnerable is scary. It's not... Okay, I'm sorry. Being vulnerable is scary. It's like jumping and not knowing if anyone will catch you. Your fears of being vulnerable might be the only thing stopping you from jumping. Stopping you from getting what you want. Fuck it, just jump. Forgive me, guys. I don't know what's going on with me right now. But let me read it again real quickly. Being vulnerable is scary. It's like jumping and not knowing if anyone will catch you. Your fears of being vulnerable might be the only thing stopping you from getting what you want. Fuck it, just jump. So yes, with that message coming up and with what I just said about the crocodile energy and how the crocodile has such a very strong digestion and because of that, it can survive anywhere. I feel like if you're considering doing something new or making some kind of major change in your life, I feel like this message is saying for you to go for it because like the crocodile energy, you can survive anywhere and just about anything. So I'm going to lay out the cards for you guys. Let's make sure everything is fitting in the screen. Hmm. Okay, so the first card is the Father of Cups in reverse, which, oh my goodness, look at the synchronicity, how it's aligned. Like, you guys have back to back the King of Cups in the reversal position. Next to the Father of Cups is the Hierophant in the reversal position, along with the Five of Wa the Five of Wands in the reversal position, King of Cups in the reversal, Nine of Cups in the upright position, and the Eight of Swords in the reversal position. So, just looking at all of the cards on the board, immediately I can't help but noticing that there is a lot of Cup energy here. And cup energy represents our emotions and it also represents feminine energy. And feminine energy doesn't have to do with sex. It's about introversion and being introverted. And with it being in the reversal position, these two cards back to back, immediately I can't help but think about the fact that maybe you have been thinking about making a change in your life. You've been thinking about an idea for far too long. And me personally, I have um, Mars and Virgo. So because of that, I like to be strategic. And sometimes that could be a challenging thing for me because 
I'll think about an idea for so long to where I talk myself out of it. And if this is you, this message is to confirm to you that it's time for you to start mapping out your to-do with small steps. Like, how are you going to get to where it is that you're trying to achieve in your life right now? And you're pretty much past the stage of thinking about it. It's like you're thinking about it so much to where you're putting so much doubt into it to where it's like it'll never happen. And it's not because the idea that you have or whatever changes you're trying to make in your life is a bad one. It's it's a matter of just going for it because, you know, like I said, if we think about something for too long, we'll start to create, give ourselves reasons, justify why this isn't the correct time to do what needs to be done. And then we'll be frustrated with ourselves because we didn't take action. And I'm th I'm talking about all that and then I'm noticing that but next to each other, the hair fin is the number five energy and the five of wands in reverse is also the number five energy. And the number five energy is all about sudden and unexpected changes and just basically being spontaneous and going for it. And sudden and unexpected changes can be great because basically that's when the opportunity come in that we least expected. You know, automatically I think about a, a quote, I think by Oprah, where she says, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. And sudden and unexpected changes is what allows luck to come in sometimes. So yes, for those of you who chose group number one and the crocodile energy, it's time for you to start being strategic and start preparing for whatever it is that you've been thinking about. Whatever changes you're trying to make in your life, it's time for you to prepare for those changes. It's time for you to list out your to-do list. Like for me personally, I had to implement some changes in my life recently because like, okay, if forever, say I wake up today and I have no plans to do anything and I have no places to be, I might stay in the bed for hours, probably get out of the bed like 11 o'clock in the morning when I woke up at eight o'clock. And by the time I do get out of bed, it's like the day is pretty much over and I have no motivation to do anything because, you know, it's like I got good sleep the night before, but it's almost like it tires me out to just lay there. So what I start doing now is creating a to-do list from the night before. So for example, mine might look like, you know, the first thing that I need to do in the morning is my meditation practice. Then I need to do some kind of stretching or yoga and then I'll list out the things that I need to do. And what helps me to get out of bed in the morning now is the minute that I get up to go and pee, as long as the sun is out, I will not get back in the bed. I will go back, make the bed and get up and start my day. And I've been doing that lately and it's actually been working for me and I've been able to get up and get things done. So I feel like that's something that you might wanna implement the to-do list from the night before. And when you're creating this to-do list from the night before, be realistic about it. You know, be realistic about it because what can happen is, what can happen is that you might overload yourself with things to do and then don't get the opportunity to do everything that needs to get done. And then it's like, you feel like a failure and pretty much, fall back into old habits. So be considerate with yourself when you're creating your to-do list. And another thing that you want to keep in mind is be forgiving and patient with yourself when it comes to not achieving the things that you say you want to achieve. Like another thing that I do for myself is I'll pay attention to why I didn't get something done today and learn from that and try not to do it again in order to be more successful in achieving my goals. Like for example, today, earlier today, I sat on the couch and ate a bunch of edamame. And I don't know if it's the soy sauce, the soy sauce that I put on top of it and eat consuming too much, 
or is it the garlic powder? So it's like, I don't know if I'm raising my blood pressure with all that salt or lowering it with all that garlic. But all I know is that once I'm done eating, I am super exhausted. And then it's like, I fall asleep and have to take a nap or whatever. And that happened to me yesterday. So, you know, I'm paying attention to the pattern and I'm going to make changes and I'm going to cut back on, you know, too much of something that I'm putting on it because I have a tendency to overdo things sometimes. So, you know, I'm paying attention to what's working for me and what's not working for me so that I can create the proper routine or system that's going to help me out, you know? So, you know, looking at your cards, I'm looking at the, um, the, the nine, the nine of cups. And looking at the nine of cups makes me think of the number nine in numerology. And the number nine in numerology represents a completion. And I find that in life sometimes, you know, and not even just in life. Let me go back to the number nine energy in numerology. The number nine energy in numerology is about completion. And some of the challenging aspects in life for people who are strongly associated with the number nine vibration is that they have a hard time letting go. So people who are born in September on the 9th, just anything having to do with the number nine vibration tend to have a hard time letting go and will hold on to situations far too long, even when they're toxic. So looking at this display of cards, I get that you might be in a certain situation in your life where it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to evolve to the next level in life. And sometimes what's scary about evolving to the next level in life is for the simple fact that when you climb to the next level, you're no longer at the top, you're back at the bottom again. I feel like in life, it's like as long as we're growing, we'll always be the freshman. So you have to be okay with being the freshman in the next endeavor that you're looking to take on in your life. It's okay to be back at the bottom again. And you're never officially at the bottom when you're growing because you can take on past experiences with you. You can take on learning experiences from other people's experience with you. So don't allow that to cause you to be stuck. And I feel like whatever is happening with you right now is going to change pretty soon. I feel like you're developing a new perspective and a new way of seeing things that's going to help you to push forward and move from out of the rut that you're in. And the rut that you're in, it might not be so much of a rut. It might actually be comfortable, you know, but deep down inside, you know, you're growing past this thing. It can be a relationship. You might know that you've evolved past this a relationship, evolved past this friendship or whatever, but it just feels safe to stay in it. But the reason why you're watching this video right now is because you know within yourself that you're over it. You know within yourself that it's, it's time for change. It's time for something new. So I am here to tell you that like the crocodile spirit animal, you can survive anywhere. You can survive anywhere. Be open and flexible for the sudden and unexpected changes that are coming in your life. It's like we have no control over it anyway, so why fight it? At least being open and flexible about it. It's like you can slow down enough to catch the sudden changes, to catch the turns in life that are necessary in order to achieve the things that you want. And another thing that's coming up in my spirit is that when you make these changes in your life, do not be discouraged by what may appear to be blocks that will come up in your way, you know, and the blocks that will come up, if you pay attention, you'll realize that there's always a solution. The only time you'll feel terrified or feel powerless in your situation is whenever you're thinking about the future. That's the only time you'll feel powerless is when you're thinking about, okay, what about six months from now? Don't focus on six months from now or a year from now. Just focus on each day at a time and do the best that you can in each moment and just know that the, the path, the next path will appear. You just have to keep 
moving. That's more important than anything, group number one, who chose the crocodile. You just have to keep moving. But it is time for you to get in the game. It is time for you to get out of your head, get out of your emotions. It is time for you to get up, get out of yourself. The time of introspection and introversion is much needed, but it's time for you to make the changes that are necessary in order to bring the success that you want in your life. And keep in mind, you know, what you've learned in life within the past few months. Implement that in your business plan, your to-do list as you move forward and plan your future. We've all learned a lot, you know, about what is essential and what isn't, you know, and and um just everything that's happened in the last few months. We've all had the opportunity to learn from it. So implement these changes in your life as you move forward. Group number one who chose the crocodile and just keep in mind that you can make it anywhere. You can survive anything. The only thing that can possibly stop you is you, your own thought process, your own self-limiting beliefs, if you have any. That is the only thing that can stop you from achieving whatever it is that you would like to achieve moving forward. Those of you who picked the crocodile um, pile, Liking this video would really help this channel and I would really appreciate it. You know, thank you so much for watching. Please share your experience with me in the comment box below. I look so forward to seeing you in the next video. Group number two, for those of you who's picked the hawk spirit, I feel like I resonate with this pile. I've pre-shuffled the cards just so we can move along quickly. So this will be new to me just as it is to you. And this is, you know, a message from the universe, what you need to know right now. And looking at the hawk as a spirit animal, immediately I think about the hawk's focus, their vision, you know? And when I think about the focus and the vision, automatically I think about your ability to read between the lines, your ability to see things before they happen, your ability to know that someone is going to reach out to you before they actually reach out to you. And I feel like this is the time where it is very important for you to trust your ability to just see things and know things. Because as you prepare to make some important changes in your life, you know, in your life coming up, you're going to have to trust your intuition. You're going to have to trust your vision. You're going to have to just know that whatever it is that, you know, your higher self told you to do, it will work out. And what I do to help me when it comes to situations like that is to pretty much keep a mental journal and even a physical one at times of basically moments when my intuition has guided me and how it doesn't stray me wrong. Doing this helps me to just trust my intuition. And I feel like that's the main message coming up for us who chose pile number two and the hawk energy being able to trust our intuition. Trust yourself if whatever is happening in the world or around you, if everyone is freaking out and you don't see the need to freak out or you don't agree with their course of action, don't, don't, don't force yourself to go with the flow of everyone else. Trust yourself. And as I'm saying that, I'm noticing that the fool card is in reverse. And I feel like the fool card in reverse also talks about us not trusting ourselves, not trusting the divine guidance that is within us. You know, looking at this fool card, I automatically think of the number zero. And in numerology, I did a video um, about the number zero, and you guys can check it out whenever you get a chance. Check out my numerology and astrology content. But the number zero to me represents like think of like a cosmic egg and possibility it's 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 like think about an egg that's empty and you have the ability to manifest into it 
whatever it is that you want to manifest into it. Don't allow other people to manifest into your egg. Don't allow other people to manifest what you will give birth to or what you will be growing moving forward. So yes, those of us who chose the hog pile, it is extremely important for us to trust our intuition and trust our higher self and know that we are constantly getting guidance and premonition as far as what to do and how to move forward. And when we don't know what to do, group number two, I think it is best for us to do nothing. Because doing something just for the sake of doing it, being busy just for the sake of being busy, sometimes can cause us to exert unnecessary energy and at times waste resources that we can use later on um, to, to, that could be of better use later on. I look at the four of wands and in the center, to me, this looks like an eye, like a third eye. So again, that ties back in and it being in the reverse position, again, that ties back into the hawk and having the vision and being able to just see and know things and trusting our ability, trusting what we see and what we know. If we don't trust our own third eye, our own intuition and higher self, we allow ourselves to fall prey to other people's intentions, to other people's visions, to other people's ways of doing things. Because, you know, if you don't plan for yourself, other people will plan for you. And if you don't trust yourself, then you'll follow other people. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with following sometimes if whatever it is you're following resonates with you. Because I feel like me as a seer, a clairvoyant, a psychic, and a reader, I'm only here to pretty much confirm what you already know to be true. When something resonates with you, that's because deep inside you already know it. And I myself too needs reminding constantly. I myself too needs validation often because, you know, like we're born into this reality and we don't really remember much. And, be, and us not remembering much speaks volumes to me also. Because basically, you know, collectively, we all can't, as humans, agree upon who we are, what we are, or where we came from. And for that alone, that tells me that no one has life all figured out. That tells me that there is no right or wrong way when it comes to doing anything. And it's all about what works for you and what feels right to you in your spirit and in your soul. So yes, um, group number two, for those of us who chose the hawk, I feel like this is the time where we need to go in, go within ourselves more. Um, this is a time where we need to do more journaling, do more meditating, spend more time in silence and just be, just trust ourselves and trust that the path for us will open up whenever it is time for us to take action. You know, say for example, your premonition is telling you that the area that you're living in is not where you should be living, you know, and you've gotten that premonition. And because of that, you might find that you're overwhelming yourself thinking, okay, well, if this is not where spirit wants me to be, you know, I can't afford anything else right now. I can't see how I'm going to be able to live in this area. Just relax and trust that you got that guidance for a reason. Trust and just know that an opportunity will present itself for you. So you have to just be open and flexible so that whenever you get the guidance to go here, go there, or do this or do that, just follow through and do it and you'll see that things work out for you in your for your greatest good. Another thing that I'm thinking about looking at this seven of swords and just thinking about the overall energy here dealing with this group. Don't be selective when it comes to your intuition. 
And that's something that I had to learn for myself personally. I had to learn that my intuition is not right when it comes to outsiders, but I dis, dis, I ignore it when it comes to family members or people closest to me. Like I had a habit of being very selective with my intuition. And I'm telling you not to be selective when it comes to your intuition. Don't, um, when it comes to outsiders, you trust, you know, the guidance that you're getting. But when it comes to your family members, you don't trust the guidance that we're getting. A lot of us were born into toxic families. And I feel like that's for me personally, I won't speak for anyone else. But for me personally, being born into a toxic situation is a blessing because it created discomfort and discomfort is a signal for change. You know, being in a toxic situation helped me to look deeper into myself. It helped me to understand the dynamics of that situation. And it gave me the tools that I needed in order to live a more fulfilling life and follow my dream, my purpose, which is being a certified life coach, a a psychic, a tarot reader, an astrologer, a numerologist. So everything that I have experienced in my life has led me up to this moment to do the things that I've always wanted to do, the things that satisfy my soul. And when I say that, I think of the Bob Marley song, Satisfy Your Soul. Um, yes. So my group hawk those of us who chose group number two and the hawk it's like yes trust your intuition trust your vision trust your ability to sit up high and look at everything from a bird's eye view if things in the world isn't making sense to you that's because it doesn't make sense and trust your intuition you know don't beat yourself up because you don't want to follow the flock don't beat yourself up because you don't feel what the world wants you to feel. You don't resonate with it the way how other people resonate with it. That is completely okay. That is completely okay. I think this is the pile of seers. This is the pile of psychics. This is the pile of intuitives. It's like you have the ability to see things and you just know things. And it is important for you to trust what you see and and just know that your higher self is guiding you to what you're being guided to for a reason. And like I said, you know, say for example, the four of wands is in reverse. You know, you might be thinking about making changes in your life and you can't see how that's going to happen. The financial security that you need is going to show up for you, for you to have that completion when it comes to your living situation when it comes to your home and then the six of wands also showing you being victorious it's like just know that everything is going to work out for your greater good the only thing that you need to do right now is to keep a positive and optimistic energy and just trust that the universe is working in and for your greatest good because that's how you're going to keep yourself in alignment so that you can be in tune with the frequency of the universe so you can get the message when it's time to move or to make whatever changes that you need to make in your life to better yourself and your family. So I want to pick a message here. I have some messages all I have some stones in my hands. I use them sometimes whenever I'm doing readings and things like that, just to ground my energy and to just, you know, help me to find some balance. So I'm going to pick a message for you guys and let's see what this message is. The message says, the only thing you may be guilty of is always seeking, always seeking the good in others. No one is perfect. Allow yourself to see people for who they are and not who you need them to be. I'll repeat that again, you guys, because I needed to hear that myself because this is also a message for me. The only thing you may be guilty of is always seeking the good in others. No one is perfect. Allow yourself to see people for who they are and not who you need them to be. 
Guys, that spoke volumes to me because again, it ties back into what I said earlier about the hawk energy and having the ability to see and to see things. And to me, this also tells me that those of you who picked this group is also an empath like myself. And being an empath, we are guilty of seeing potential in people. And even though that's a good thing, sometimes people aren't aware of the potential within themselves. So they might never live up to that potential. So here we are seeing the potential in them. And because of that, that can be dangerous to us at times because we don't allow ourselves to see them for tr truly who they are at the moment, truly see what they are in line with at the moment. We're more focused on their potential and again, you know, that could be dangerous. So like I said earlier, don't have selective seeing or selective intuition. Allow you to see everyone equally from your mother to your brother to the, 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 the neighbor to the guy at the grocery store. You know, trust your intuition and see people for who they are regardless of who they are. Take away the titles of the people in your life and ask yourself, would their behavior be acceptable from someone else? And if their behavior wouldn't be acceptable from someone else, then don't accept that behavior because you deserve better than that. You know, keep trusting your visions. I think for you guys, it's super important for you guys to start journaling, even if it's like an email journal. But I think you would do good with some kind of journals of your premonitions and visions because what's also coming up to me is that this group, similar to myself, you might have strong premonitions and just know certain things that are going to happen. And then when they happen, you have no way of confirming that to other people, people closest to you, like, look, I wrote that this was going to happen and it actually happened to where you might question if you're making things up or if things are truly happening in your reality. And I think journaling will definitely help you to validate yourself when it comes to your premonition, what you're seeing and what you're feeling and what you are experiencing. Group number two, my hot group. So yes, we have to trust our intuition. We have to journal more. We have to spend more time in silence. But most of all, it is time to see everyone for who they are. Take away the titles and see people as people. Take away the title as mother, daughter, sister, brother, cousin. See people for who they are and not who we need them to be or the potential of them because that can be dangerous because it leaves us, basically that could be dangerous and I'm sure you know why that could be dangerous because sometimes even though someone is a family member or a loved one and we love them dearly, they might not be aligned in the vibration of love and because they can be a danger to themselves, they can also be a danger to us because they're consumed in a place that is not of love, that is not of light. So they don't have the empathy to put themselves in your shoes and see how their actions could possibly be detrimental to you or your life or your family. So yes, that is why that can be dangerous, you guys. Thank you so much um, for tuning into this. Liking this video would really help this channel and I would really appreciate it. Please comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Book a personal reading with me, coaching session, or a numerology and astrology session with me. I look forward to hearing from you. And um, yes, I'll see you in the next video. So for those of you who have picked the panther energy, automatically what comes to mind is fearless warrior and just being victorious and at the same time too i look at all the dark energy around the panther and i think about the spiritual world and i think about a spiritual warrior so automatically what's coming up for you guys is that basically you are vic victorious you are strong and you can overcome anything that you put your mind to overcoming it. And the only thing that can stop you from overcoming anything 
is pretty much your own inner world, the conversations that you're having with yourself. That is the only thing that can get in your way. And I love your setup. I love your layout and I love the message that I'm seeing here for you guys. But before I get into your message, I want to pick one of these messages here for you guys that um, I've been choosing for all the groups and I really think that it just, it ties in well. So the message says, letting go, the message says, letting go of how things used to be or how they should be has brought me the most relief in the toughest times. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up or giving in. It means that I am present and that I trust the divine guidance that is taking place. You guys, I feel like that's super powerful, a super powerful message. And I want to read it to you guys again, because I feel like it just makes sense right now. And the timing for this message is, is just, this is the time for this message. And the message again says, letting go of how things used to be or how they should be has brought me the most relief in the toughest times. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up or giving in. It means that I am present and that I trust the divine guidance that is taking place. So yes, group number three, the Panther group. The overall message, looking at the cards here, I look at the sword card that is repeated and that's the main energy that's repeated on the board. So immediately, it, I'm thinking about mental energy. I'm thinking about, you know, thinking, basically thinking and just the conversations that's going on within. So to me, overall, our inner world, the subconscious mind is extremely important here. And I go to the first card, which is the devil card in the reverse position. And looking at the devil card in the reverse position, you know, this tells me that it's like basically what has shifted in your life recently is that you have allowed yourself to see things differently. And because you've allowed to see things differently, you've decided to re release the chains that you had on yourself tied to a certain situation, person or circumstances the circumstance that was detrimental to your health, that was detrimental to you and just overall your spirit, your soul, your being, you know, because in the tarot and when I think about the, the Rider White, the devil card is norm, um, looks like a man and a woman standing there naked and their nakedness to me represents their vulnerability. And they both have chains around their neck and the chains is um, connected to a vault or something that the devil is sitting on. And what is the most powerful thing to me about the card is the fact that the man and the woman, their hands are free. They have the option to free themselves from the vault that the devil is sitting on, but they choose to be prisoners. And that translates to us getting mortgages, sometimes um, car payments, being in debt, or even getting into relationships just because they are financially suitable for our situation at the moment. So with the devil card in reverse, this tells me, and then with it above the ace of swords, this tells me that you have experienced a realization, a per new perspective, a new way of being seen, but something has shifted within you where you have decided that enough is enough. And then this goes back to the panther energy and the panther to me being representing like being revolutionary and just being brave and fearless. It's like you've decided that you know what? Enough is enough. I don't care about the benefits. 
I don't care about the the cool points or the the, the perks or whatever comes with this situation. This situation that you're freeing yourself from, you realize that basically it, 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 it's just not worth it. It's just not selling your soul. It is just not worth the sleepless nights that comes with it. So it's like, yes, you've had that perspective where it's like you're ready to free yourself. And the Mother of Cups card, when I look at the Mother of Cups, I think of the Queen of Cups and I think of very intuitive, empathic energy. I think about um, feminine energy. And when I say feminine energy, I'm not talking about male or female. We all have yin yang energy within us. And when I say feminine energy in my videos, whether they're numerology or astrological videos, I am talking about basically being introverted, not saying that you are necessarily introverted, but you've come to a point where you went into yourself in order to get the guidance that you need. You went into yourself in order to recharge yourself, or if you haven't yet, that is what you are doing. You are going into yourself in order to gain the perspective that you need to free yourself. You are going into the darkness of yourself in order to transform. You know, a lot of people try to make it seem like shadow work and not shadow work, but you know, this is dark energy or darkness, you know, create labels and symbolism and kind of create fear when it comes to certain things. And when you think about planting a seed, <clears throat> when that seed is in the darkness of the soil, that is when photosynthesis happens. That is when the growth process happens. So yes, looking at the queen of cup card here, I see you going into yourself and coming up with the perspective that is necessary in order to completely transform your life and to make the changes that you need to make in order to feel fulfilled, in order to free yourself from a situation that hasn't been working for you. And I commend you group number three who has picked the panther because say if this is walking away from a relationship or something that isn't wor working for you. It's like you've chosen the high road in this situation. It's like you are the type of person that is able to walk away, make the changes that are necessary without condemning someone else in the process, without making someone wrong. Like you don't need to make someone wrong in order to feel right. And I really admire that about you guys in group number three, just looking at the play out of the cards. It's almost like you guys are the type of people that will know things and don't feel the need to go out of your way to let anyone else know what you know. I mean, if someone asks, you'll gladly share the information, but you don't feel the need to publicize what you know. You don't feel the need to make someone else wrong so you can be right. And I really need to take a few pages out of your book. Not that I feel the need to make someone else wrong so I can feel right, but I have a Sagittarius stellium. So basically that means, you know, for me, I'm very, and it's in my South Node. So I could be very in, opinionated. I like to research. I like to learn new information. And sometimes, you know, in the past, I used to feel like I was helping by informing others about what it is that I know. But I've matured to the point that I realize that, you know, energy is energy should be equally exchanged. So it is not worth giving energy to someone who didn't ask for it or who is not giving their attention in return to receive that energy. So I'm slowly learning to shut the hell up. I am slowly learning to keep my opinion to myself until it is asked for. And what I love about what I do for a living is that now I'm paid to counsel and guide people based off my research and my personal experiences and everything that I've been through. So that's, you know, a blessing that I get to get paid to do something that I love, but at the same time, I'm learning to move more into my Gemini North Node and be more, more curious and allow myself to be more of the student. And I feel like you guys have that down. And because of that, like you guys are extremely powerful. You guys are extremely 
powerful because I am drawn to the panther, the five point star on the third eye of this goat and the death card. And this tells me that you guys are extremely powerful. There is this silent power that you guys just hold, this silent power that you just harness effortlessly, you know? And then also, you know, my attention is brought to the mother of pentacles in the reverse position. And I feel like something that needs to be implemented here is a more practical approach when it comes to achieving everyday um, life, when it comes to achieving success in everyday life. Um, I feel like that's something that might be missing. So yes, you guys are very powerful. You have the ability to just see and know things and you're freeing yourself from certain things. But at the same time, I feel like a new strategy will be very helpful to you guys moving forward. A new, implementing a new way when it comes to maybe your financial situation, when it comes to your budgeting, when it comes to your savings. So let's re rewind to the beginning of this reading where it's like, yes, you're freeing yourself from certain things, you know, back to the whole thing with the devil and freeing yourself from the chains around your neck, freeing yourself from that debt or, or whatever it is that you were tied to. So it's like now that you freed yourself from that, now it's time to, again, go within, see what's important to you and what you need moving forward, and then come back out, maybe read some books, do some research, maybe take some financial literacy classes. I don't know why that's coming up. It's coming up, so I need to share. Again, this is a general reading. So, you know, some of you might resonate with this part way more than you resonate with the rest. But yes, I have to tell you that taking some kind of financial literacy class or just keeping record of your finances is extremely important here. As you free yourself from past situations and move forward, um, moving forward, it's good to keep a journal of everything that you've done in the past and what you plan to do moving forward. It's similar to how when you're opening a business, you have a business plan. A business plan is like a roadmap as far as how you're going to move forward and achieve the things that you're going to achieve. And in your business plan projection, you might write out, okay, two years from now, we should be here. And if two years from now, you're not actually here, you can go back to the business plan and think about the long-term goal and see strategically what changes you might need to make to help you to get where you are supposed to be or see what changes you might need to make for the um, for the future because maybe being where you are now shows you that where you thought you were going is not actually where you want to go. So, you know, I see a need to going back to the beginning and rewriting your long-term goals. And when you rewrite your long-term goals, you also need to update your short-term goals and make sure that your short-term goals are simple and um, what is the word? Attainable, attainable. And short-term goals could be as simple as, say, for example, it's your goal to graduate from college with your master's in economics, you know? Your small-term goal for now might be just to go sign up for school. You know, that could be your small-term goal, to go sign up for school. And once you sign up for school, your next small term goal might be to go purchase the books that are necessary and to study the classes. You know, what is the outline of the classes you'll be taking? Basically, just a step to step approach as you move forward, because I see that this group might tend to get overwhelmed when it comes to dealing with the bigger picture. What, not saying that you guys aren't big picture thinkers saying for everyone, life can be overwhelming sometimes when everything is thrown at you at once and you're not sure as how to go about each step. Like for me personally, this is something that I was struggling with. Um, just, it's like 
I wake up and I have so much things to do to where it's like I'm so overwhelmed that nothing really gets done. And if something gets done, it doesn't really scratch the surface because it's not a task that is obvious that I'm making progress. You know, and that's something that's also important when you list your tasks out. Look at the ones that will make the biggest boom. The ones that make the biggest boom will help to make you feel more motivated that you're actually getting stuff done. Like for example, with myself recently at night, what I do now is write out my the list of things that I plan to achieve the next day. And I try to be realistic about this list so that I don't overwhelm myself and feel like a failure if nothing gets done. And if it so happens that I don't get to do whatever I said it is that I was going to do, I give myself a break and be observant about what it was that stopped me from making things happen and I make a note of it and then the next day I make sure that the same thing doesn't happen again. So for example at night I might write out okay the first thing I need to do when I wake up is meditation. The next thing might be some kind of stretching or yoga. You know I don't put too much pressure on myself. I just need to stretch my body so that you know some circulation can happen. And then the next thing might be to do whatever daily tasks need to be done. Like say, for example, yesterday it was cleaning and organizing my entire home, living space. And doing that, you know, was a great thing to do first of all the other things because, you know, just looking around at a clean space makes me feel motivated. My mind feels clear. It's like an artist having a clean palette to create art on. So that was important for me to do. Whatever is important for you to do, only you will know. And another thing I wanted to share with you guys too that has also helped me is that I tend to lay in the bed way longer than I should. So what I do now that has been <clears throat> really helpful for me is that when I wake up in the morning and use the restroom, the bathroom, as long as the sun is out, I come back and I make the bed and I get the day started. I do not get back in it as long as the sun is out, you know, and that helps me to start my day intentionally and just get it going where before I would just use a bathroom, get back in bed, you know, just lay there, get on the phone and try to do everything from the phone. And then by the time I get out the bed, it's like late in the morning, early afternoon, the day is practically over, nothing got done and I feel like a failure. So, you know, coming up with little systems like that has been very helpful for me. And group number three, my Panther people, I feel like that would be extremely helpful for you also to come up with like a to-do list, to have like some kind of a calendar where you write down the things that you need to do and highlight them off as you do them or give yourself some kind of sticker, some kind of reward, and then allow for some days for you to not have too much to do. Allow for some days where maybe the only thing that you have to get up and do is your meditation and your journaling and your stretching and optional you can, I don't know, do something productive, but that's optional. Or maybe you put nothing productive for that day because that's just a day where you're just chilling and going with the flow. And if you happen to do something productive, great. But yes, um, group number three, my Panther people, um, a list, um, uh, uh, setting goals, setting new goals to match these changes that you've made within yourself will be very helpful to you and just having uh, a checklist or something you can refer to. And I find that writing things out with hand. So, you know, journaling and writing your goals out with paper and pencil, I think that would be very helpful to you. There's something magical that happens when our hand is making movement, mirroring what's going on in our head. My hands is filled with stones. Um, I think there's something magical about that. So, excuse me, I feel like that's something that you guys might want to consider and implement. And group number three, my Panther people, liking this video would be so helpful to this channel. I would really appreciate if you can do that and share your experience with me in the comment box below and how you resonate if you do. I would love to hear from you. Please like this video and share it with anyone who you think might find it helpful. I look so forward to seeing you in the next video.